Hey guys and welcome back. So in this tutorial here we're going to be setting up a missile object. So what's going to happen is we're going to first set up the missile object and its sole purpose is just going to travel up the stage. So it's going to start where our player object is and just travel up. We're going to set that up first and then we're going to link that so that when we press the spacebar it fires a missile or it creates a missile object just out the front of our player up the top here and then that missile code is going to take over and make it travel up the stage. So let's set up our missile graphic first. I'm going to go back to the rectangle tool and maybe select a greenish kind of laser. And I'm just going to draw out a simple little line or a little box. Doesn't have to be very big. That'll do. Then go back to the selection tool and select that. I'm going to turn this into a movie clip by pressing F8 on my keyboard. And we're going to call this MC Missile. And we're going to make sure the registration point is down the bottom of our object. So the bottom center. That's going to create our XY position marker down the bottom here. So that's what the registration point does. But next, we need to go into the Advanced tab and we need to export this for Action Script. So just tick that box. And what this is going to do, it's going to allow us to link this object, our missile, to a class that we're going to create called MC Missile. And that missile class is going to tell this missile object to travel up the screen. So press OK. And if we look in our library here, we've got an MC Missile setup. Its registration points down the bottom center, and its linkage is MC Missile. So we can link a class to it by calling it MC Missile. And whenever we have a linkage object set up, we don't need to give it an instance name because in this particular case, we're going to be creating them whenever the user presses the spacebar. So having an instance name, there is no point for this one. So let's set up a class that's going to handle our missile. I'm going to go back over to Flash Develop and on my project name I'm going to right click and go add new class. I'm going to call this class MC Missile and I'm going to browse for a base class and it's going to extend Sprite this time around. Let's press OK. So the difference between a sprite and a movie clip is they're basically almost the same, except the sprite doesn't have any uh, frames in its object. So if we look in here, our stage is a movie clip, so we can have multiple frames if we want. At the moment, it's just a sprite as well, because we only have one frame. It's the same deal with our missile. If I double click on it, we're just using one frame of it at the moment, so we can make it extend sprite instead of movie clip. So with that set up, um, what we need to do first is test if our object is actually on the stage. Because we can't actually start accessing any of the properties of the object, or we can't access its X or Y or things like that without it being fixed on the stage. So uh, let's set up an event listener for but to see if our missile is added to the stage. So there we're going to set up an event listener and the event we're going to listen for is added to stage. So I'm just going to select that, press enter and we're going to run a custom function called on add. So I'm going to create that function again, flash develop with control shift one. So flash develop does take care of a little bit of the things for you. So one of the general rules is once you're done with an event listener, it's completed its purpose, you should always remove it. So in this case, when we created the on add function, we know that in this particular point, uh, objects already on the stage, so we can remove the on added to stage listener. So let's start running our own custom code from this point. So now that our object is on the stage, run our custom code. 
And to do that, I always set up another function called initialize, and this is where I put all my code in. It just keeps things nice and clean. So what we want to do first is make our missile travel up the stage. So whenever we're doing something that's repeating or repeating the movement or basically creating animation from one frame, what we need to do is set up an event listener to listen for when the frame ticks over, so the enter frame. So I'm going to add an event listener. It's going to listen for an enter frame. And we're going to go to another custom function called missile loop. So let's set up that function called missile loop. So in here, it's basically like our player control movement. It's going to be running 30 times every second. And what we want is to tell our missile object to just travel up the stage. So if we look back on our Photoshop document, if we want to travel up the stage, we need to minus from its Y position. So I'm going to say this object, its Y position, let's minus equals, so whatever position it's currently at, let's minus, say, 10 from it. So let's save this and test, see if it works. And you can see here my missile travels up the stage, so it'll be run on movie. And if I test it again, control enter, you can see it running up the stage. But yeah, we don't want our missile to already be on the stage. When we press the space bar, we want it to fire a missile. So let's fix that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this object that's on our stage. But don't worry, it's still in our library. It's still here. And we do have a linkage name called MC Missile. So we can create a new one at any point in time. So let's go back to our first game class. And what I'm going to do is in my key up event handler, what I want to do is I want to test when the spacebar is released, let's fire or create a new missile on our stage. So I'm going to test what key code my spacebar is. So I'm going to uncomment that line and test our movie and just press spacebar. So we're dealing with key code 32. Let's back over in Flash Develop. Let's set up an if statement. If our spacebar is released, if our event key code equals 32, let's fire a missile. So once again, just to keep code a little bit cleaner, what I'm going to do is instead of putting all our missile code in here, I'm going to create a new function called fire missile. So let's go ahead and create that function with control shift one. And this is not going to accept any parameters because it's not a listener object, it's just a standard function call. So what we want to do in here is we want to create a new missile object. We want to add that missile object to the stage. Finally, we want to position that missile object so it's just on top of our player object. Sorry, that was fun. Anyway, so we've got the code set up here. Well, we've got the comments set up here. So let's go ahead and do what the comments are saying. So let's create a new missile object. So we'll create a variable. It's going to be a new missile variable. And we're going to data type that to our MC missile class that we just set up. So whenever we want a new object of something, we say new and whatever our class name is. So MC missile in this case. Think of it as like a post-it notes, so those little yellow sticky things you get, we're just peeling off a new post-it note and sticking it on our stage. So we have an unlimited supply of these post-it notes called MC Missile. We can peel one off and stick it on stage anytime we run this fire missile function. 
So we've created our missile, but at the moment it's only sitting in memory. It's not actually on our stage, so we can't actually see it. So what we need to do is we need to add our missile object to the stage. So to do that, we access our stage object, and we say add child, and then what object do we want to add? So what display object do we want to add? In this case, it's going to be our new missile object. Because a display object is any type of object you can see. So it can be a movie clip, it can be a sprite, it can be a text field. Um, there's a lot of others. But because our MC missile is extending sprite, sprite is a display object. So that's why it fits into here. So finally, let's position our missile so it's on top of our player object. So let's set our new missile's X position to equal our MC player's X position. So they're linked up on the X axis now. And let's say our new missile's Y position. Let's let that equal our MC player's Y position as well. Now what that's going to do is it's going to move our missile when we create a new one. Let's say, uh, so we create a new missile. It's going to add it to the stage. It's going to move it to the X position of our player. Then it's going to move it to the Y position of our player, which is actually down here. But it's going to animate pretty quickly, so it shouldn't overlap. But if it does, we can fix it. So I'm just going to delete that missile. And let's test our code to see if it works. So I'm going to hit spacebar. And look at that. Firing missiles at the position of our player. So nice. Now, there's only a small little problem with this, and we're going to fix that in the next tutorial, but let's do a little bit of setup work for that now. What we want to do is we want to keep track of all our missiles that we have on the stage. So to do that, we're going to use an array, and we're going to push these missiles into that array so we can keep a collection of them. So up the top, just above my constructor function, I'm going to set up a new private variable. And this is going to be called A for array and missile array. And then let's set up our missile array. So what this is going to do is yeah, basically hold all our missiles that are currently on the stage. Let's initialize variables at the start of our constructor function. So our missile array, let's create a new array object. Okay, so now every time we create a missile, which is going to be down here in our fire missile, let's add it add our new missile to our missile array. So we can say a missile array, let's push in our new missile. And just for testing, and this is why uh, we need to clean the code up in the next tutorial, let's trace how many missiles are in this array. So we'll say our missile array dot length, and this gives us how many elements are in an array object. So think of an array as like a fishing tackle box, whereas a variable is just a normal, simple box. So with a variable, you can stick one bit of data in there. So it could be a number, it can be some words, it can be anything else. With an array, it's like a tackle box. So there's one container, but they're split into different little smaller containers, and you can put things in each of these containers to an almost unlimited amount. So let's test this and press spacebar a few times. And let me just get rid of that um, trace statement for our key code. Let's test it again. So I'm going to keep pressing spacebar, and you can see here that number down here is how many missiles are currently on screen. So we're getting a lot of missiles, even though they're off the top of the stage, they're still traveling up there in you know, cyberspace. So what we need to do is we really need to optimize this, because after a certain point in time, Flash is just going to crash. So let's fix that up in the next tutorial.